At least two senators on Wednesday denied the majority bloc's intimate dinner with President Rodrigo Duterte was a loyalty check amid rumored destabilization plots. Senate Majority Leader Tito Soto and Senator J.V. Ejercito say the mood throughout the evening was light. Ejercito says Duterte didn't even ask them about the ongoing probes at the Senate. He adds the president didn't ask anything of them, nor did he push for any policy or project. The Tuesday dinner came weeks after Liberal Party senators were ousted from the majority for opposing the president. And after retired cop Arturo Lascañas testified before a Senate committee on the president's hand in the Davao Death Squad. Duterte had met with some senators in Malacanang before, but the dinner was the first time more than half of the Senate was present. Sota says it was the first time for some of the senators to meet the president in an intimate gathering. Ejercito also says they discussed the proposed tax reform measure and the return of the war on drugs. He adds Duterte showed them a cleaner list of local officials involved in illegal drugs. Ejercito says Duterte also talked about detained Senator Lila de Lima, his fiercest critic. He says the government's drug charges against her were based on reports from international intelligence. Vice President Lenny Robredo on Wednesday says the Duterte administration's war on drugs had left Filipinos feeling hopeless and helpless, with trust in the police eroded by thousands of summary executions. Robredo, in a video message to a United Nations meeting on extrajudicial killings posted online, calls for international scrutiny on President Rodrigo Duterte's controversial drug war. Some of those have told us that they, when there's crime, they normally go to the police. Now they don't know where to turn to. Our people feel both hopeless and helpless, a state of mind that we must all take seriously. More than 7,000 people have been killed since July in the war against drugs. Robredo describes the killings as summary executions. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch earlier warned Duterte may be held liable for crimes against humanity with state-sanctioned killings. But Duterte and the national police insist security forces aren't breaking any laws. The official line is that those killed by police were in self-defense, while the unexplained deaths were likely due to drug gangs eliminating rivals. House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez trips the leadership titles of House leaders who didn't vote in favor of the death penalty. Mr. Speaker, I move to declare vacant the position of Deputy Speaker for Central Luzon. Is there any objection? The chair is done. The motion is approved. Among those stripped of House leadership positions is former President of Pampanga Representative Gloria Arroyo. She was a deputy speaker for Central Luzon. The speaker earlier said all deputy speakers and committee chairpersons who would vote no, abstain, or be absent during the third reading of the death penalty bill would be stripped of their leadership titles. Lawmakers approved the death penalty bill on third and final reading last week. Alvarez says, quote, We won't forget that because we asked the respective parties to submit their nominees for the replacements. Then other lawmakers are removed from their committee chairmanships. Alvarez says, quote, Well, if I'm burning bridges, then so be it. We can't do anything about that. The several House leaders who either voted against the death penalty or were absent during the proceedings aren't stripped of their committee memberships. Environment Secretary Gina Lopez and the Climate Change Commission commend the Senate's concurrence to the ratification of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Lopez says, quote, I'm very happy. This is a great victory for the planet. President Duterte set the stage for the Senate's concurrence to the Paris Agreement. With a vote of 22 to 0, senators on Tuesday sealed the country's ratification of the Paris Agreement, two weeks after Duterte signed the instrument of accession. The CCC says the expeditious concurrence reflects the Philippines' sense of global urgency. Senate concurrence is the final step in the ratification process of a historic pact that has been hailed as the first universal, legally binding agreement on climate change. The Philippines and other nations agreed on a global climate pact, which aims to keep global temperatures from rising this century to below 2 degrees Celsius in 2015. The White House on Tuesday preempts a media leak of United States President Donald Trump's 2005 federal tax return, acknowledging key details he previously refused to release. The White House says Trump paid $38 million in taxes in 2005 and had earned more than $150 million that year. Trump had repeatedly refused to release his tax returns, breaking decades of tradition among presidential candidates of all political parties. The admission comes just before MSNBC began as broadcast. 
A Trump administration official hits the media for being desperate for ratings when you're willing to violate the law to push a story about two pages of tax returns from over a decade ago.